<clears throat> Hope everyone is doing well. And as always, as you come on to uh, the screen, if you'll pop in and say hello and uh, good morning, that would be super. Again, this as this being our last class for the color theory, <clears throat> I want to go through and do a review and talk a little bit more about the design and show you just a couple of pictures of what I found on the forum so that all of you can see that. So today is going to be a kind of drawing everything together and reviewing some of the things that we talked about that I feel is important and may some of it may have gotten lost a little bit in the making of the blocks and that type of thing. So again, please say hello in the uh, chat box and let me know you're you're there and uh, We'll, we'll go ahead and get started with, hi Dot, good morning. Thank you for, for jumping in and saying hello, appreciate that. And uh, Sharon, thank you from, um, from Seattle. <clears throat> it's kind of a gray day here, and I don't, you know, I don't know if it's gray in Seattle today, but um, it is a little bit here um, this morning. So, as I look at what we've talked about we started with you know just looking at our fabric stash what's in it know yourself uh, do you like bright colors we you know we've we've talked about seasonal we've talked about emotional we've talked about um, the you know the symbolism that comes in colors and as you have gone and searched through your stash what did you find out about yourself? What colors are more dominant? What, what do you tend to find in your, um, in, in, you know, the, the fabrics that you buy? And when you go out to buy, do you buy with a project in mind? Do you buy um, what you like? Uh, do you uh, go shopping for fun and see what you can come up with? Um, or do you go with a specific, a specific plan and stick with that plan and so know who you are and uh, what you like and whether you are more of a traditionalist a little bit modern a little bit contemporary um, or very much one of those or if you like to mix it up a little bit and so that's kind of where we started is to find out who you are and what you already have in your stash but the biggest thing that I hope that you take away from this um, class uh, on color theory is that value plays a far greater role than color. I know we called the class color theory because we couldn't come up with a name that um, said value in it that uh, that was catchy and and that would draw attention and, and bring you bring you here because when we talk about value it's kind of boring but how saturated is that fabric uh, are you a pastel person are are you a, a a little bit quieter a little bit more toned down person um, jewel tones um, the bright the the pure colors and find out where you fit into that or if you're across the board uh, what I what I notice about myself is that I'm constantly constantly drawn to a wide variety. One day I can go shopping in the same store that I always go to and I'll be drawn to jewel tones. The next time I'll be drawn to, um, you know, those softer, quieter um, colors. And so I'm, I'm confused, a bottom line. And so I, I kind of go all over the place. And that's not totally a bad thing. Um, at least I'm telling myself that. Uh, but so know who you are. Then I want to, again, emphasize value. And now, you know, as, as an ending to this class, go back into your stash and see if you have the full range of value. And here's a couple of things that I'd like to share with you um, that you might want to um, work on as kind of a homework. It's not a project, it's just thinking. And you could do this even at a quilt store. Um, you know, fine for um, analogous fabrics. You know, you have, we have the, you know, fine, pick out four on the color wheel. 
and then go and find each of those colors in two different values. Strong cro contrast, so that you truly understand um, a very, very strong contrast between the two, okay? Um, or do it with split complementary. Find those two on one side, go directly across, and find those in four different values, and throw in a neutral. And, you know, play with those key components that we talked about in terms of the color wheel. The color wheel is a tool. It's not there to say this is what you have to do. It's a tool to help guide and direct you in what you want um, for your quilt. But there's, but there's other things that play into that as we talked about. Um, and another thing, you know, another not idea that you could have is go with analogous. Um, find a color and find eight different values. See if you can go the full gamut and really work at that. And there you, I don't know if you could find it in your stash, but you may be able to take some time and go to a store and see if you can do that. And once you keep doing that kind of, that, that kind of thing, um, it's going to become ingrained. It'll just be who you are and you'll start to look for contrast within a block and all of that. I think I've, I've tried to share with you a few blocks that, that do that. I'm gonna be looking at my notes because I, I just want to go through and make sure that I don't skip out on anything that we're doing today. So we have the um, color wheel and I want to take a moment. I'm gonna drop you down. Um, to my table and I, you know I, I want to talk about the primary colors which are right here and the primary colors are you know in in the dye world it is um, magenta it is cyan and it is yellow and so they're evenly spaced um, on the color wheel and then you have your secondary um, which is equal parts of a primary and a secondary. So if you had yellow and magenta and you mix those completely together, um, exact amounts, you're gonna come up with orange, okay? So those are secondary. And again, they're equally spaced throughout the color wheel. And then the third one that we spent a little bit um, talking about are the tertiary colors. They're equal parts of primary and a secondary color. So if we went with yellow and we went with that orange again, we're going to get yellow-orange. And if we put a little bit more orange than yellow, we're going to get yellow-orange. And if we put a little bit more yellow than orange, we're going to get golden yellow. And that's really how it works around. So those tertiary colors are on either side of the secondary colors that we have on the color wheel. And then as far as relationship of the color wheel and how these work together, that's what all of these are. We have the, the complementary, the analogous, the split complementary, and uh, the triadic. And usually there's, there's an even split. And so when you're looking for colors, if they fit into this range, find that color directly opposite of the color wheel. And you know you're going to come up with a, a, a good um, palette for your quilt. And so it's, it's a tool. It's just helping you out because sometimes we'll put fabrics together and think they should work and something about them just doesn't feel right. And, and generally speaking, it's that we, we kind of haven't followed, and I don't want to really use the word rules, um, but we haven't followed what we, what we instinctively know. And the other place to really understand um, the color wheel and open our eyes to a little bit more of what's out there. Um, I love to garden as much as I love to quilt and play around with fabrics and that type of thing. And so as you're taking your walks or you go and visit um, you know, places or, or go to you know, anywhere, even Disneyland or some, some place like that, where you know, they have professional gardeners come in and create these these scenes with plants. Look at what's going on in, in that, what colors they're using, and relate it back to the color wheel because nature is our best teacher. 
uh, nature does it automatically for us in many ways and it's just opening our 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 eyes to that thought and uh, so anyway that's that was that and in terms of primary secondary and tertiary and how you get those colors and how they fit into them now the second thing is that tint tone and shade um, you know tint is adding white to it so if we went back to a secondary color which is orange yellow and we added white to it, it's going to start to get a little bit more pastel. And I wanna turn um, this around because this is that line that has the tints, remember? And so a little bit of um, white, a little bit more, a little bit more until we get it almost um, to a white color. And so those are our tints. Then our tones are adding gray uh, to the color and gray is a combination of white and black and so here you have what that's going to look like and so as you're looking for neutrals as you're adding something to the quilt in terms of a tone that gray undertone is what we call it it has a little bit of this feel to it and we can find out you know if, if we're leaning more to the warm colors or the cool colors in our grays and so the browns often work really well with the warm colors and um, the you know the blue grays and the grays work really well with the cool colors and we talked a little bit about that and then shade is um, adding black to it and here we have that on the you know on the the right side so a little bit of black a little bit more until we get um, really from from where I'm sitting it's almost like a Hershey's chocolate color and so we've we've added that those colors and that's saturation in terms of the tints tones and shades so to begin to just look at the color wheel and pretty soon you're going to be able to recognize undertone whether it's a cool or a warm undertone and how it will fit with whatever fabrics that you have chosen for your um for your quilt then um we talked a little bit also about color symbolism and you know just the colors themselves carry you know it gives you a feeling or an emotional reaction to to color and what you like and what you don't like and here is where I you know I'm gonna tell you that I would love to know that you stick with what you love um, others, you know, if you go to a quilt store and ask for help, uh, they'll they'll influence you one way or another. Uh, sometimes they don't, and that's wonderful if they help you. But um, let you go with where what you like. Go with your gut, and know what you like because we're all different, and that's what makes us so very very special. And so you know, it's okay to love what you love. It's, it's who you are, and you're the one that's going to be living with the quilt. So, you know, go with your gut on that. So, you know, they say red, you know, ignites that sense of power. And um, orange is exciting and lively, and yellow is warmth. And, you know, that, that success and, and green is nurturing and, you know, home and, and that type of thing. Blue is devotion and trust. Um, purple, you know, has always been the color of royalty because it was so very difficult to um, find, get purple, um, you know, that the true purples and uh, violets. And so again, it's a tool. The color wheel is a tool, just as your rulers and your rotary cutters in it, in it puts a, um, you know, another possibility in your hands to help you find um, the perfect fit for you for your next project. And so see it as a tool. And, you know, as you're putting it together using, you know, your analogous, your split complementary, whatever it is that you're making, um, a zing fabric, they talk about that sparkle fabric or zing or whatever word you want to use for it. Remember that it is, um, it should be used in small amounts. Um, because it can it can start to overwhelm a quilt if you use too much of it and so the different amounts 
in your quilt add for an exciting quilt so they don't have to equal each other um, and so, so I, I noticed in the um, chat box that a couple of people had asked about the color wheel and where you get it um, and I see that Kristen put it up um, a link to where you can you can pick up that color uh, the color wheel that I'm playing with and it is it's a wonderful thing to have um, in your toolbox and then do not forget about um, in terms of you know the the warm fat colors always come forward in the quilts and they stand out and they draw attention to themselves whereas the you know the cool colors the blues the greens um, that um, begin to you know lay a foundation if you will and uh, build up in their their beautiful quiet colors and give a very different you know here it's you know go excitement uh, warmth all of those kinds of things and here it's quiet cool uh, contemplative those and then there are a couple of transition that they can either go cool um, because this has you know some some blue gray undertone and so we can start to transition from warm to cool here um, or this can go with warm and the same thing across on the other side where we start to get into here can begin to transition into the cool colors or um, transition into the warm and you know I love chartreuse for that reason and I love that you know red violet it says here a purple um, but a combination of those you know two on there I I, I love both of the sides of that for that very reason and um, so again chartreuse to emerald magenta to plum um, adding the blue into the red um, to get that and then we talked a little bit about spring um, summer autumn and winter and you know spring is that um, pastel those gentle colors um, the world is coming back to life after um, a long winter um, there's lots of white in it it's it's very much infused with that white in those tinted colors um, summer it's starting to saturate a little bit more you get those bolder stronger colors and then autumn turns into those warm tones you're starting to add those you know those rich um, reds and yellows and um, pinks into your your color and um, so think jewel tones rich colors good saturation in that fall and then winter um, is bright and think silver think um, ice think um, still those clean hues that really uh, tell us that it, you know it's crisp and cold um, for those of us um, you know who live in seasonal areas um, where the you know the seasons are very predominant where they aren't you can still get a sense of that through your through your quilting <clears throat> and then all obviously what who you're making the quilt for and um, if there's a purpose to it that also would determine because sometimes if we're making a quilt to, um, for someone else we are you know we don't tend to necessarily want to make it what we love we want to create that quilt so they will love it because we're giving it as a gift so sometimes that takes us out of our color box and i think that's good for us to to stretch that just a little bit and so um anyway that's that's really a review of what we've what we've talked about and we worked at it in our um blocks that we created and made and that um, I just want to double check that I haven't um, I think I've covered most of that um, and if I haven't pop it up if you have another question or something pop it into the chat box because as always before I leave I'm going to go through and make sure that I have answered um, your questions and um, made sure that that I don't leave and I know that from time to time I do miss something um, at the time um, I do try to come back the next week and uh, 
be sure to answer that. Then I want to talk a little bit about the um, the blocks themselves that we've been working with and how you might um, you know finish that off. But first, I want to go to um, I I had just two people um, put their images on the forum that I saw this week. Uh, this first one. I want to share with you is um, Kyla has started with a design here that she is thinking of putting her blocks in and I see that she's got nine inch here I'm assuming these are possibly the three inch shoe fly with um, sashing in between those love the layout I, I think this will be quite beautiful and I hope that you will post it when you get this completed now, what, especially what I like about this um, particular layout that she has here is that um, it's unique. It's a little bit different. And I know that many um, use the EQ8, um, EQ7, or whatever you might have in those programs. Um, and, you know, you can, you can do a, a great deal with those. <clears throat> and I think they're a great tool. And I understand that... Um, Alex Anderson is coming out with one or it's already out and so um, and my understanding is that it's quite um, user friendly so that that would be nice um, as well and so I'm kind of looking forward to checking that out and seeing what that's all about but I like the uniqueness of this and how she's she's worked this um, and um, looking to see if she's going to go vertical or if it's going to be a square or if we're going horizontal. So all of those things changes up a little bit, um, just a little bit in terms of what we what we use and um, what we don't use. And Sharon just asked if I'll put up the block numbers again. And yes, I will um, do that here um, in just a minute. I'll grab my my list and get that and put it up for you. So Kyla, thank you for posting that. I love seeing it. Um, it's given me a couple of ideas and so that's that's very helpful. And then the next one that I would like to share with you is um, this one is from Jenny and she has posted that she's really um, thinking about a layout and what she might um, do or not do with this. And you know, and I like a couple of things that you've started to do. Um, I'm assuming this dark green is your sashing or teal color. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be part of the quilt, but I but I love the fact that this is on point and that these are coming out from that. Probably the only thing that I would say if you're going to do something with those or if that was just checking out your sashing, whatever, is that this moves over and comes out of it from that point. And so, <clears throat> but um, that warm colors are, are kind of going at this angle and the cool colors that predominate um, are going this way. Um, and I, you know, if I might say something here, you can see again just how much warm colors you know come forward because that's the first thing that you notice and the only thing that i would say is that here is where one can see that value plays a big role um, i would say that this block if you did it in the same way that you did this one and this one with higher value in contrast it would not be so predominant um, at this point and whether or not you want to remake that block or not is totally up to you um, so that it's not as as dominant in terms of what you're doing but I love how you're starting um, where you're going with this um, I love this as the border I I think I would make it a little bit wider so that you can get a little bit more impact with those flowers I don't know what this width is on there, but I might go an inch or two a little bit bigger so that those flowers make a little bit more of an impact. So thank you so much, Jenny, for putting that up. I appreciate that, and hopefully a few comments will help. Um, this is where I wish we could talk back and forth 
um, with that. And then the last but not least is that I have, um, this is how I ended up finishing um, my blocks uh, with that. I And again, as always, I really love the lime green in there. Um, and I, you know, so you can kind of see where I'm drawn um, with that. So, and now how do we go about quilting this? Um, and I'm not sure. I, I think that I want to do, it's kind of like that matchstick quilting where I just want to do straight line and run it vertically up and down the quilt and keep them fairly close together, possibly every half to um, three quarters of an inch through the quilt so that they, you know, they um, hit, um, so they don't distract from the block, but, but, um, complemented. So I'm, I'm thinking if you, if you see this one up here, I did the match stick on this one and I love it um, in terms of, and I know that I'm pointing with that, but the vase behind me um, on the screen is done in match stick. And I don't know if you can actually see that on the camera, but the other thing that I thought about for the borders, cause I offset them just a little bit um, because I wanted that little bit of contemporary look is that I may go at angles and do kind of a chevron down um, the one side um, and uh, you know, affect it that way. So anyway, that was my finished um, part of that. And um, so Rebecca, you said, can hardly wait to see your finished quilt. Um, there, the top, there it was. So, and uh, then let me just go through and find those block numbers and uh, get those for you. All right, let's see. We had the Inogalus was number five. The complementary was number two. The split complementary was 44. Uh, the, and maybe if I could ask Kristen if she could throw those up for me um, as I'm giving it. So um, number five, number two, number 44, Number 56, um, and then I think it was 70, let me, let me just double check here. It was number 70 um, with the pine tree, and then it was, um, I think that was it, that was six. I think I have them all. The only one I may have not is that last one. So I had number two, yeah. So anyway, that I think were the numbers up there and, uh, and I'll put it up on the forum as well. And I think that should do that. So let's see what else we've got over here. You know, I, I like it when you've, you've commented that why you like a certain color because you're, you know, the area that you live in is, is kind of um, gray and, and all of that, then those bowl colors um, certainly, um, you know, brighten up your day. So I think I've got, you know, most of your questions there. And so as you look at, you know, the um, blocks, let me pop down here, you know, then as far as quilting them, you can get a lot of ideas from others quilting, like on Pinterest and things. But if you want to, you know, do your own quilting or have someone, um, you know, do the quilting for you. What can you do within this block to enhance it? And each of these have, um, you know, some layout ideas. Each block has a design layout and, 
you know, some some thoughts for you on how you might um, go about um, putting a quilt together with within the, from this book, which I think is very helpful because even if you did a layout that you really liked, and I think this first one is is kind of fun, especially for what we did. Um, you can use different blocks. They, they wouldn't necessarily have to all be the same. These could be different from these. Um, you know, you could, you could do a bunch of different things with that. Um, you know, and the Tree of Life that we did, our basket quilts are always fun on point. Um, for example, like over here, those are very traditional settings, but you know, you could, you could do them in a different way um, with other blocks and have some, you know, a section on point and a section not on point. And so take a time, take your time to look through this book and, and get some thoughts and ideas. And, um, and as far as quilting it, if you're going to quilt it yourself, are you going to quilt each block separately that will enhance that particular block? Or are you going to go with an overall design? And, and it depends, again, very much on your setting. Um, as I was directed or, you know, felt that I was going to go with, um, you know, my vertical look of my quilt. And um, the, this is the, um, the book. It's the new quick and easy block tool, and it's at the it's on the quilt show. And so I think Kristen has put a number of links up um, for the quilt show store, and so that you would be able to find it there. This is a great tool to have because the the thing that I like the most about this book is the fact that here you have a chart. Um, with all the different sizes of blocks and depending on this is a four grid block so you have four six eight ten and twelve so they're going to fit together they're going to work for you um, this is a three grid block and so again you have three six nine twelve and fifteen so you have different um, cutting for the blocks um, the only thing that would be you know nice um, is if they gave directions on how to sew it together and the pressing and that. But as we worked through the blocks, as you saw, um, we we were able to work through that and you know find and see how um, the you know the block went together in terms of that. And always look as you're as you're putting the blocks together. Is there a simpler way? Um, to do it and how would I make up with flying geese how would I do half square triangles um, do what works and fits into your style and the way you work um, thank you Brenda we also did block 91 in addition to 5 to 44 56 and 70 thank you so much I knew there was another one and I couldn't come up with it um, and uh Brenda, you're you're exactly right. If you're from Canada, the shipping is is very costly, and um, Amazon would be a good way to go with that. So, um, definitely um, go that direction if you are um, in Canada. So, anyway, that is pretty much a overall review of color theory. I do hope that you will continue to look at that color wheel. And when you sit down to make a new quilt, um, really think through why are you making it? What do you want it to say? Um, where where you're at, whether you want cool or warm temperature quilt, um, get a little idea from nature and start a collection. I have a file from magazines and different things. When I find a color palette that I think, wow, that could be really great in a quilt. If I'm out and about um, in a park, uh, someplace or somebody's yard that I've walked past, I'll take a quick picture with my phone and then or I'll tear out that page in a magazine and put it aside and when I start to look at patterns for my next project I'll take a look at those and see if any of those will fit in for that or if I'm making it for someone else um, I check out what colors that they like and work within that and use the color wheel as a tool simply to give you some directions when you think the color isn't working quite the way you want it to or it doesn't quite fit and remember um, your gut is is kind of smart um, it, it tells you you know what you want to look at um, it tells you what you want to do and go with it and um, 
you know, just have fun with this and uh, enjoy it and keep working at all of all of this because it's going to be become so much a part of you that you're not going to have to talk about struggling so much anymore with color and so next week we are going to um, start something new and uh, I'm going to do some one shot classes for a while um, some fun things that are you know um, out there uh, not out there but that are um, possibilities for us to, to do in a one-shot class. And next week, I'm going to talk to you about rotary cutters, um, kinds, and you know what you know what you how you use them and what you use them for, as well as rulers. And so to give you a little bit of an idea about that and cutting accuracy, uh, because I know we always have questions about being able to. Um, cut accurately and so we'll we'll address that next week so rotary cutters rulers and cutting accuracy for next week and I hope I'll see you back here and you guys have an absolute wonderful week and we'll see you next time